What is going on everybody? Silver Scrounger here and today is the day, the day for the final episode of the Constitutional Silver series. It also happens to be on the day, which is Silver Sunday. So with today being Silver Sunday, we're going to wrap up the odd denomination silver and lesser silver content coins that we started in the last episode. So let's get to it. All right, like I said, last episode, we started with the odd denominations and the lesser silver content coins. And we covered the silver three cent piece, also known as the trime, the war nickel, and the first two designs of the half dime. And if you haven't seen that one yet, you can check it out as well as all the rest of the series in my Constitutional Silver Series playlist. And I'll leave a link down below in the description to that playlist. Now, in this final episode, we're going to cover the last two designs of the half dime. The 20 cent piece, 40% silver half dollars. And we'll look at some of the Eisenhower dollars that you see here. But before we get into that, this video and the Constitutional Silver series is sponsored by Royal Coins and Jewelry. If you're looking for some specific coins for a collection or trying to stack some silver or gold for the lowest cost, you really need to go check out Royal Coins and Jewelry. Their silver and gold prices are drastically lower than online dealers and even beat out competing shops. You can stop by the shop if you're in the Houston area or check out their website at royalcoins.com. And yeah, I know, you're thinking, but scrounger, any savings on the price, I'm just dumping into shipping. Well, you can forget about that nonsense. When you go check out, use my promo code SS. You'll get free first class shipping, a value of up to $6. I will leave a link to their website as well as their Instagram page down below in the description. All right, so to finish off the half dimes, we need to look at the capped bust half dime, which you see here, as well as the seated liberty half dime which is right here and a little bit better example now the cat bust half dime was minted for nine years let's see if I can get in there better without that light shimmering all over it there we go and it was from 1829 through 1837 and in all honesty, they all sell for roughly the same price throughout the different grades. There's one that is worth mentioning that goes for nearly double what the rest do. And that is the 1837 with the small 5C, meaning for a 5 cent. So that's about it for the cat bust half dime. Now the Seated Liberty Half Dime, which you see here, this one, had a huge dent in it, and it's got a couple of marred spots on the reverse. And then this one here as well. These guys, they had a really good run. 
It went from 1837 through 1873. And within those years, there are quite a few of key and semi-key dates. And with so much more yet to cover, we're only going to talk about a few of the higher valued coins. But first, a little history in it. In 1837, the first seated Liberty half dimes were struck in Philadelphia. And they were with no stars on the obverse, which you'll see a picture of it right there. I guess they felt the design was a little too simple and boring. So in 1838, the uh, Mint decided we're going to change it up and add the stars to the obverse. But before they did that, New Orleans started minting the half dime with no stars in 1838. But because of this change that was going on, the only stars half dime for 1837 are in Philadelphia and the only no stars half dime for 1838 were in New Orleans minted. And that leads us to our first big money half dime, the 1838 O no stars. There was only 70,000 of them minted and in a G4 condition, this one starts off at an easy $150. It jumps over two grand in an XF condition. And it hits $10,000 when it gets to mid-state. So that's a pretty good amount of money for a small half dime there. In 1840, they decided to add drapery from the elbow, which I'll show you. No drapery. Drapery. You'll notice at the elbow where there's uh, some drapery added. Now again, with this change is another higher value coin from New Orleans. Although in lower grades, it is somewhat comparable to the rest. As it gets into the better grades, the price of the 1840 O with drapery climbs quickly and in AU50 it is at a $1,500 price tag but there is a drastic jump when it gets to MS at an MS60 it's $10,000 and then it jumps even higher to an astounding $22,000 in an MS63 now 1846, I don't know what happened really, but this is by far the lowest minted year of the Seated Liberty Half Dime. There was only 27,000 of them minted, which makes this one the highest valued Seated Liberty Half Dime. And this starts off at a $850 price tag in a G4 condition. By the time it reaches AU, it's already past 7,000. It hits an astounding $30,000 in an MS-63. That is a whole lot for a small little coin. In 1853, we saw yet another change to the half dime. The weight of the half dimes have been 1.35 grams from the start with a smooth edge. Then it dropped barely, just a little. To 1.34 grams when they went to a reeded edge in 1837. But in 1853, they reduced the weight to, an, uh, to a lot lower 1.24 grams. And this affected the dimes, quarters, and half dollars as well. And this was all under the terms of the Act of February 21st, 1853. And to note the change in the weight, arrows were added on the sides of the date, which you see here. With this change comes another higher valued half dime from again, New Orleans. The 1853 O, no arrows, is the one to look for. And this one starts out at a $300 price 
and steadily climbs over $10,000 once it hits mint state. Now in 1860, we see the final change to the half dime. The legend, United States of America, was moved from the reverse, which you see here, and it was put onto the obverse in place of where the stars are. 1860 was also the last year the half dime was minted in New Orleans. And in 1863, the San Francisco Mint started minting the half dime. It is also the year that the Philadelphia Mint half dimes began to shine. For five straight years, 1863, 64, 65, 66, and 67, the Philadelphia minted half dimes had very low mintage numbers and a bit higher price tags. Not nearly any of the ones that we already covered, but they're better than their counterparts for those years for sure. So, like I said, there was a lot to go through there with the half dimes. But finally, we're moving on to the 20 cent piece. There was only one design for the 20 cent piece, and it was the Seated Liberty. It was only minted for four years from 1875 through 1878, but with the last two years being proofs only, and very few of them. The 1875 20 cent piece will most likely be the one you'll find. The Philly and Carson City minted coins are very similar in price in low grades, starting at about $200. By the time they reach an AU or mint state grade, the Carson City ends up double the price of those minted in Philadelphia. And in 1876, the mintage numbers drastically fell. And on top of that, most of all the Carson City coins were melted back down. And it's also believed that the Philly coins met the same fate. All right, now we move on to the 40% silver coins. Our first up will be the Kennedy half dollars. Now, the Kennedy half dollars started minting in 1964, and that is the only year that you'll find them in 90% silver for the regular business strikes. In 1965, they started making them with 40% silver, and they continued this through 1970. Any time after that for the regular business strike uh, coins, we're all clad. There's not really much special to mention with these. And that's just being honest. Because in general condition, general circulated condition, they go for about $350 or so a piece. And they're not exactly the most desired uh, coins for, between... Uh, coin collectors or silver stackers just because of the the lower content in silver but in a good mint state condition they can be about six dollars so i mean that's why they're not really that much collected uh maybe in a higher grade they get a little bit higher to you know fifty sixty dollars maybe in a MS 65 or 66, but for the most part, they're just what they are. So let's get on to our next one. All right, so now we are finally to the last ones here. These are the Eisenhower dollars. Now, these they made both with silver and copper nickel clad. And the silver is not even 90%. It's, they say it's uh, roughly 40%, but it's, it's an odd mixture. Let me, let me see if I can explain this. All right, so the outer layer is 80% silver and 20% copper. And it's bonded to an inner core of 0.209 silver 
to 0.791 copper, which it gives a net weight of 0.3161 ounces of pure silver. So it's not even 40%. And like I said before, there's a, a mix of the uh, silver clad and the copper nickel clad coins through the years that they were minted from 1971 through 1976. And they skipped 1975, honestly. Now, pretty much all of them go for about the same price. All the uh, silver uh, Eisenhower dollars do. And that's typically around $14, $15 in a MS-63 condition. If they're in a regular circulated condition, they're 8 to $9.00. And that's about it. All right. So that completely wraps up our Constitutional Silver Series videos. And we started from the simple dimes. Going through all of them. We went through the quarters. Talked about all of those. You know, got some good ones here, too. This one's really amazing. Got a 1957 Denver, according to this. But, if you look, it is a 57. But there's no Denver mint mark. So we got a an error done by NGC on that one. But anyway, back to it. Talked about the quarters. Got some Standing Liberties here, uh, Washington Quarters. I had a uh, barber, but I'm not sure where it went off to. Then we also talked about the half dollars, which I just recently picked this one up. Beautiful, beautiful Walking Liberty. And, of course, we got the Benjamins or Franklins. Then we got our Kennedys, of course. And then we went on to the dollars. Peace dollars. Along with our wonderful Morgans, which everybody knows a Morgan dollar. I really like the toning that I got on this one. And I actually have another one that has some crazy weird toning on it. Let me show you that one. Right here. Get real close. Let's see here. It's got some crazy coloring all over it. So... We did that. We talked about all the uh, all the one dollars, the silver dollars, and then we went into all of our odd denominations, like the half bust dime or the half dimes. There's a cat bust right here, which you saw just earlier, and then the seated liberty, the damaged one I have which I showed you earlier as well. And then we went into the 20 cent pieces. We went into the, the uh, war nickels as well, being 35% silver. There's a nice yellowy toned one. And then we went into the... Uh, Kennedy's that are half, or I mean 40 percenters. Then we went into the Eisenhower dollars as well. So, everything here is all part of our constitutional silver. And I was happy to go through them all, learn a little bit myself. And I hopefully was able to help you learn a little bit of our history as well. So, that wraps up this entire series and i am looking forward to finding a new series to do so if you want you can leave me a comment 
down below and let me know what you think would be a good series to explore to really dive deep into and try to try to learn some new things about our uh, historic coins uh, the meanings behind some of them uh, all kinds of different things whatever we want to explore into let me know down in the comments Alrighty, but until next time this is silver scrounger saying thanks for watching and keep on stacking I want to thank everyone for watching my video. It is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, found it informative or entertaining, please hit that thumbs up button by liking the video. Also comment on what you think about anything discussed. I'm always interested in to hear other people's thoughts. Until next time, this is Silver Scrounger saying thanks for watching and keep on stacking.